Oh hey, hi. Welcome to the channel, or welcome back if it's not your first time stopping by here. I'm Alex Perry, and if you are here watching this video today, you're most likely interested in cinematography and filmmaking. And to jump right on into the topic of this video, I'm going to show you a behind the scenes breakdown of how I shot a recent music video. From the creative brainstorming to the final product, I'm going to go over all the steps and all the hard work that went into bringing something like this to life. So with that, let's dive in. Our journey begins with the ever so talented Francesca Panetta. I've worked on a few music video projects with her over the past couple of years, and since she's now releasing some new music, we both thought it was a great time to work together again. After listening to the song a few times and discussing it at length with Francesca, we both agreed that the concept of going around in circles and almost being stuck in a loop was the best direction to be going for the music video here. We naturally thought of carousels or merry-go-rounds because they just constantly go around in a circle in a loop, but after realizing it might be hard to find one near us in the vicinity of where we both live or at least close enough that we can travel to, we realized it maybe was best to just simplify the concept and that's when I got the idea of just placing Francesca in the backseat of a car that was going to be just driving around aimlessly in a loop. And we really wanted to capture the fact that this was happening over and over again, so we wanted to make sure it looked like things were happening on different days at different times. So that brings me to how we actually went about shooting this. Now there are two ways you can go about shooting interior car scenes, and that is to actually shoot on location inside a moving car, or to use what the film industry likes to call the poor man's process. So the poor man's process is basically the safer option and allows you to have more control because you would essentially have the car just parked stationary and you would set up lights outside of the car that you can swivel around, swing around and just move about to mimic the look of lights flashing by and driving by as the car would be in motion. But we really wanted that natural look to the whole thing. So we opted to take the not so safe route if you want to call it that and go with actually shooting on location inside a moving car. So I figured it might be cool to loosely lock off the camera just hanging outside of the front passenger window of the car aiming at the back where Francesco will be sitting and having the window open with the camera just aiming into the back seat there and alternate that with an angle from inside the car also pointing back at her. So we only had one day to shoot this video, so I thought if we drove around at different times of day, it would almost look like each shot was taken on a different day to make it seem like Francesca was going through the motions of driving around in this car day after day after day. We did full takes of the song in a single go and changed up her outfit each time we did it to get a variety of looks. So you may be wondering, how on earth did I actually manage to hold this heavy camera rig outside of moving car take after take after take throughout the duration of a day? Well. Let me tell you, it was absolutely not easy. I had to hold on to my camera for dear life and hope for the best. Are your wrists gonna be able to handle this? Who knows, I'll probably be in lots of pain, but it's worth it. Beauty is pain. For the art, right? <laughs> Even if it's for a video. <laughs> this is basically how we've been doing this. Just, this is not the right way to do this, so if you are gonna be filmmaking like this, don't just hold your expensive camera out the window. But I'm doing it, I mean, right? I think it's turning out. We'll, we'll see. But I'm basically holding this here while we're actually driving. So we're going to get to it and we'll see what happens. I could have risked dropping my camera, breaking it, breaking my lenses, and that could have been a disaster. So I highly don't recommend doing that. But again, sometimes when you're doing run and gun projects, you have to just improvise and go with the flow. So the thing that did make this a little bit easier was the fact that we shot this video in slow motion. So essentially, you wanted it to look like she was melding the words in real time, but you see everything else moving in slow motion, like her hair blowing in the wind. So to achieve that look, you actually speed up the song quite a bit, which makes it shorter actually. So when you're doing a multiple takes over and over again of the same song, it's actually only about a minute or so instead of the three to four minutes that the song actually would have been. Although at the end of the day, my arm was killing me, my wrist was killing me, and I was exhausted I really think it turned out well and I'm super happy with it so well worth the effort. Okay so now that you know how we shot this let's quickly go over the lighting and the gear that we used to shoot this music video. First things first I shot everything on my fully rigged out Sony FX3. After trying out a few different focal lengths I settled on shooting it with my SLR Magic Micro Prime City 35mm T1.3 lens and since a lot of these shots were during the day on a bright and sunny day I needed to use some ND filtration so I actually went with two different options at the same time. I know that is not the typical way you would do something like that, but I'll tell you why. I am adding my ND filter back on. 
I thought I didn't need it because I added in this cool little filter from Kalari Vision. That's a mist filter, which helps bloom the highlights, mm -hmm. but it also is a three stop ND, I believe, so it darkens the image quite a bit. So I thought I wouldn't need this as well. But now that I'm out here, it looks quite bright. Mm -hmm. So I think I do need to add my variable ND filter back to this, we'll see. So typically, when I want to use ND, I have my small rig map box on that does have a variable ND filter in there. So I can just easily rotate the little wheel and it will change the intensity of the ND filter. But for this music video specifically over here, I really wanted to have a bit more of a soft and bloomy or dreamy effect. So I wanted to use some type of additional filtration to achieve that. So the awesome people over at Kalari Vision were nice enough to send me this awesome product right over here to try out. And it is their one quarter mist three stop ND filter. It's essentially like a black pearl mist filter with a bit of ND built in as well. But the awesome thing about this filter is that it doesn't screw onto the front of your lens, but it magnetically snaps in place in front of your camera sensor. This is absolutely a game changer when it comes to shooting with multiple lenses on a shoot since you don't have to remove the filter from your lens, then change lenses, and finally put the filter back on the other lens you just changed to every time you want to swap lenses. If you want to see more about that filter and how it works, I will be posting a video on that soon, so stay tuned for that. But as you can see, this filter added a nice little subtle softening and slight bit of blooming to the highlights in my images. Finally, for the lighting, I actually had two different setups, one for daytime and one for nighttime. For the daytime shots, I went with straight up 100% natural light. In hindsight, I could have added a little bit of fill inside the car to brighten the exposure from within the car a bit, since I noticed in the edit that some of the exterior parts of the scene were a little too bright for the brightness level of the interior of the car. So I had to mask off and adjust the exposure a bit for Francesca in the car to retain a proper exposure for anything outside of the car. But since the FX3 has such a great sensor, I didn't really run into any issues doing this. And for the night shots, we wanted to go with a relatively natural look, so I had our handy assistant Roberto sit beside Francesca off camera in the back seat and hold a Godox TL30 tube light set to a red color and aim at the left side of Francesca's face. That was meant to be a constant light and color in the shot since it was motivated by cars driving by from their taillights or from the red stoplights on the streets as well. Red is a relatively safe color to choose for lighting a night car scene since it is so naturally found out on roads when driving at night. In terms of lighting on the right side of her face, the main camera facing side, I decided to just go with any light that would have been coming from the street itself through the window. I made sure to pick stretches of road where there were lots of street lights or interesting shops with neon signs and lights on to create interesting patterns of moving light on Francesca's face. And, and off in the trunk here, we added this other tube light with a nice blue glow to the back windshield, back of the car. We had Frances uh, Francesco, Francesco, I was going to say. That's fine. Roberto. I'll, I'll go by that. <laughs> Francesco. <laughs> we had him in the back as well, holding the lights, running some BTS camera, and just being a great moral support for our uh, <laughs> wonderful star. So there you go. That's a quick little breakdown of how we shot and lit this music video right over here. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes breakdown. And if you feel like it and want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe. I will be releasing a video on the color grade for this video as well, so stay tuned for that. And I might even do a separate video that just kind of dives a little bit deeper into the lighting here. Anyway, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Ciao for now.